Hello, Nick. You are up first, sir. Hey, Bart. Yep, so I got a hand from MGM National Harbor. National Harbor. So what's the size of the game? The max buy-in is 500, okay. uh, but typically, depending on the day, you can see, like, MGM National Harbor has a very wide range of, like, Saturdays and Fridays, extremely playing big. Everybody's buying in max. But if you go in on a Tuesday, you might see a lot of $100 buy-ins. Uh, so the uh, hundred is the is the uh, bottom bottom cap. Well, whenever you're playing um, in the smallest game, you do get a disproportionate amount of short stacks, which is another bad thing. I mean, we always talk about it's a race to the five dollar blind level, as uh, Michael G knows because he's coming out with a new podcast, "Race to the Five Dollar Blind," I believe it's called something like that. Which will, I'm very looking forward to anticipating uh, hearing hearing that. But that's one of the reasons why, besides the high rake environment. You just get a disproportionate amount of of short stackers, so it's like one three, right? Is it one three? Yeah, it's it's one three, and the main villain in the hand is the only one that covers me. I have four fifty in front of me. Everybody else in the hand is going to have around two hundred dollars, but they're not going to come into play when we get later in the hand. So, I would say four fifty is probably the effective you want to put. All right, so let's get to let me pull my notes. Uh, so I have Jack of Diamonds, uh, Jack of Clubs. And I am in the big blind. Okay, so Jack of Diamonds, Jack of Clubs, and the big blind. Okay. Yep. So uh, it folds to the, to the low jack, the low jack limps, high jack limps, cut off folds, button limps, small blind limps, and then uh, Hero is going to raise to thirty five. All right. So looks like there's one, two, three uh, limpers, Four small limpers. blind completes, right? And you go to thirty five. Yes, I go to 35. Uh, I wanted to size up here because we've had a lot of people defending large opens after limping, and I really did not want to go multi-way uh, out of position. I really only wanted one, maybe two callers. So, Well, when I think about that, and I've talked about this quite a bit, the way I think about that, this is, is that you want to, it's not necessarily thinning the field out so you get exactly one or two callers. Obviously, jacks inherently, there's going to be a lot of boards where you're going to face an overcard. I always just try to concentrate on what's the most amount I can raise here to get the most amount of value so that the types of hands that I want to call will call, especially in a shorter stack format, like dominated hands, like the king 10 off, the king jack off, because if you're not it, the finding the sweet spot is finding that maximum amount where those hands will call. I'm not really overly concerned about the number of players. It's just leaving value on the table versus sort of blowing them out of uh, out of the hand, right? There's no ante, so somebody could just raise it up to like 100, and you wouldn't get any callers. That wouldn't be great. So that's yeah. kind of how I look at it. Okay, so is taking down the pot here uh, pre not something that I need to be concerned about? I mean, taking down the pot for the limps? Yeah. So, so is would it be like if I was to raise to twenty five? I feel like just the number twenty five alone and going like that sizing is going to just inherently get like all maybe all the limpers to call in this type of game. Well, I mean, if you're going to get all the limpers to call, then I would probably raise higher because at least a few of them will call. Um, I mean, you can do the math out, right? Like if you make it twenty five and four people call, uh, that's a hundred. But if you made it say like 30 or 35 and three people called then you're getting more money in right getting make it 35 and get three people to call so anyways so what happens all right so uh we have the low jack call uh -huh. the high jack call button folds and small blind folds all right so low jack and high jack call okay so it's not bad so it looks like it's probably like 110 maybe 115 to the flop right yes yes okay flop is 10 of spades Mm -hmm. Nine of diamonds, yep. four of clubs. Okay. So 10, nine, four, rainbow. Uh, and, you know, it is a board where it's, you know, there is a possibility that someone can have two pair here as opposed to like 10, four, deuce. I don't know. I mean, it, it, you know, in the lower stakes you go, sometimes people will limp in with hands that uh, people would otherwise raise at the higher stakes. So set of 10, set of nines isn't necessarily out of the question. You also find people playing like all kinds of hands that they don't, that they shouldn't be playing like 10, four suited. That's what you want. So it's just sort of about kind of, um, you know, maneuvering post flop, although obviously in a capped game, you know, you're, you're somewhat short, but I would certainly bet for sure. Yeah. So I see bet to 65. 
And my reasoning for seed bending was basically I can get value from plenty of one pair holdings, gut shots, uh, you know, some protection for over cards. Like okay. I don't want it to check around and get it and have a king or queen come out. Yeah, I mean, I would be looking at this if if these two guys are like say like if these two guys have like four or five left. I would just try to be shaping this where I can try to get a, a bunch of money into into the pot. So if even if you went a little bit larger, say 75, 80, the pot would be what, like 300, and then they'd have about 300 left. And then you have like two streets to sort of get it in. So you, you don't actually even have to go um, that size, 75, 85, something like that. You could actually probably go smaller here just so you can induce calls so that you can start to get some money in. I, I think 65 is fine. Okay, so you go 65. Uh, low jack calls and the hijack folds. So the low jack is going to be the main villain. He's the guy with 450. Alright, so you get one caller. It's a pretty good situation. So now the pod is 245, right? Something like that. One uh, some yeah. close to that, yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, break, break the MGMs. Uh, I, I think $5 cap. Okay. Don't hold me on that, but turn is the 8 of diamonds. Okay. So now I have the overpair with open ended mm -hmm. straight draw. Right. I decide that I'm going to be tart with with him only calling. I really discounted him having a set or two pair, especially with the person behind. It just seemed like with how the board could change on the turn here, that a set or two pair isn't going to be slow playing that often in that game. Well, you also you also block. Queen Jack, which is really what sort of comes in here. Yeah. Low Jack calling again. It's low stakes. Low Jack calling. He, I mean, he probably shouldn't call with a hand like nine eight with a guy behind him. He might have that. He might have ten eight. But the thing is, is that like with the popping two forty five here, and you guys have already put in a hundred. You only have three fifty left. I would just continue to just target like ten x here. Exactly. So I'm, I'm targeting 10 King X. ten, Queen ten, Jack ten, and then if he shoves, you you probably have to call because you're going to get priced in if you were to bet like a hundred. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So I, I really didn't feel like I have that much of a hard decision no matter what I win here. I just wanted to make sure that King or 10X was going to stay in just so if a scary run out happened, I'm getting value now. Right. And I really don't need actually that much protection for overcards now because now if the queen comes in, I'm going to have essentially the essential nuts. Sure. So I go 110. All right. So here that's 110. I see some people echoing that you could go larger on the flop to just jam all turns. I mean, that that could be too. I mean, if you went like 90 and somebody called, the pot would be 300. And then you guys would have about a pot size bet left. Um, you know, again, I haven't played super, super small. So I'm always a little bit, uh, I'm always trying to get the most amount of value from my hands. The worst thing can happen is if you go huge and then jam turn and somebody like, you know, folds out a 10. If that's not the case... Someone's always putting you on ace king. I can certainly see that line from some of the from some of the chatters. But okay, so you go one ten. If the guy calls, the pot will be like four seventy, and you know you guys will have like two twenty left. So yeah, we'll have like uh, maybe a little bit under half pot. Mm -hmm. um, so anyway, he does just call, even more implying that he's he's really going to be heavy on ten x here, or like a hand like jack nine, you know, some, something like that. So. And straight draw. Yeah, so now the pot is 465. Yes. Okay. And the river is the Jack of Spades. Jack of Spades, okay. Hmm. So a river top set. Yes, you river top set, but it puts a one liner out there to a queen. And it also puts a one line. I just want to make sure I have the board right. It's ten of spades, nine of diamonds, four of clubs, eight of diamonds, jack of spades. There's no flushes. There is ten x that can be backdoor diamonds here, but ten x, uh, you know, king queen of diamonds, something something like that. Um, I guess you could have. Do you? Have, yeah, you have the jack of diamonds, so he. Can I have, have the jack of diamonds. Yeah. So, so it's a one liner out there to a queen. It's one liner out there to a seven. Here's the thing. Again, you know, roughly, you said you about have about half pot size bet left here. Um, it's, it's, it's pretty close. Cause if he has a hand like queen 10, obviously it's a straight, if you jam here and he has like king 10, ace 10, he really shouldn't call. So now you're really looking at targeting in terms of value here, like some sort of two pair that hasn't jammed already. The, the only two pair that would make would be Jack 10 and you have one of the Jacks. So it's just one of these things where like, you never really have to be 
you never really have to be worried about somebody value betting, uh, like value owning themselves here in this spot. Like, it's not like you check and someone's going to, even at this level, they're not even going to jam a set if they somehow get here with it. So there's a, I mean, there's a couple of different, I mean, it, it's close because it's a half pot ties bet. If we went into the weeds and we thought that there, that we, maybe this guy was prone to slow play and he would call with worse here more than 50% of the time, then we could jam. Now, if he wouldn't, we could check. And then if he were to jam, check fold, if he's never value betting anything that's worse than a straight here. So there is definitely credence to sometimes check folding in a given scenario when people don't turn hands into bluffs. At the low stakes, though, I got to be honest with you, I I, I kind of don't want to check fold because I've seen so many bizarre types of things. But if I'm not going to check fold here, then I probably just go for it and bet and try to get value from something that that's just going to call down because maybe who knows maybe he makes some sort of hero call on you because you've been he it doesn't make sense to him you know what i'm saying that's where my head was i'm depolarizing here essentially even though i'm at almost the top of my range it, but he doesn't know that and the the problem is is that like if like you said if if i i want to be value on myself at least some type of the, some t- part of the time here but he needs to be calling like you said, over 50% of the time with a worse hand. He does need to be called with over 50% of the time. With Some people in the live chat are saying, what about a block? I'm not, in general, a huge, huge fan of a block. There are certain times that it has merit, though. You, If you're going to put out a block bet, you always have to be called by worse in order for a block bet to make any sense. People that block the river when they never can get called by worse, make it just doesn't make any sense unless they're trying to induce a raise. Now, this might actually be a spot where you could block something really, really small. I could freeze 7x, right? If he he might not want to all of a sudden raise his 7x, that would be raising almost 100% of the time when I do check to him. Well, it's not, but, but it's not necessarily that you're freezing 7x. It's more of, if you still have to get called by worse though, like blocking and not getting called by worse to freeze 7x makes absolutely no sense because you could just check fold. Uh, you know what I'm saying? You could just check fold. So this one's kind of really close because of the fact that if you think he's not going to slow play off two pair and sets by the turn, just because the pot's getting big and it's low stakes, it's just weird because there aren't, I mean, there are some combos of Jack 10, right? But there's only one Jack left in the deck. So there's really only three combos of Jack 10 left. So. It, and essentially I'm, tar- I'm changing my, the target of what I, I was targeting 10 X the entire time. And now I have to completely change my target to something that I discounted previous in previous streets. And so anyway, I do make the decision to check. So you check. Okay. So you were thinking about betting, but hero checks. Okay. Yep. And he jams. So it's like for 220, 230, something like that? Yeah, two yeah, some somewhere around two thirty. It Yes. I mean, if I can't find a bluff here. I mean, here's the thing. There's always, always like some sort of, you know, sometimes we hear some results that are just like, as I say, out to left field at the low stakes. And people will sometimes remind me that maybe I'm giving your opponents like too much credit. But here the guy called next to act with a guy behind him on the flop. It's not like it's heads up and you're up against some guy that wanted to float with something like ace king. Yeah, you know, so some some BS hand, right? And uh, he called next to act, so I I just don't know what kind of bluff he could possibly have here. Another straight draw that makes two pair that probably wouldn't shove would be jack eight. Of course, you have one of the jacks. So unless I can think of a hand that he would value bet that is worse here than top set, I think I might find a fold here. Although, like I said, I've, I've heard some wacky, wacky stories at the small stakes. Yeah, so um, I I just con- consider, I'm thinking, well, maybe I just have to say pot odds because I'm getting, I mean, uh, was it over four to one? Well, if he's betting half pot, you're getting three to one, right? Six, three to one. So you're, I mean, you got to be good one out of four times, right? You got to be good one out of four times. So it, it, 
Yeah. I mean, you're definitely getting good, good pot odds. I think it's probably pretty close. And uh, I don't know, like if I was entirely, if I didn't know anyone at the table and I was playing like super low stakes and for me, maybe if somebody knew me, yeah, maybe I'd flick in the call. Maybe I would flick in the call. I, I think the more interesting thing is what is better here? Is it to check or to block? And then <clears throat> if your opponent, if you do freeze a seven, then you could make a case for block folding, but you're going to get some insane pot odds. So it gets very, very tricky. This is the other thing, too, about the small stakes, where it gets very, very tricky. So what did you end up doing? So I ended up folding, and after I I basically held up my cards, like I, I was like, I'm, I fold. Action was over. I held up my cards to see if he wanted to show, to see what I had. And he ends up showing Ace of Diamonds, King of Hearts. What? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah uh and i because he showed that i just said you know what you deserve to see it and i showed him top set well i well i don't, I don't know if i would have done that i don't know if i would have done that no, but I, I was leaving after that hand i gotta tell you though anecdotal you know anecdotally i didn't know that he had ace I, I, literally i don't even know i it that <laughs> the here's the thing like from and again maybe we don't get necessarily the best sample because people are calling in like somewhat strange hands that's why they're calling them in but I, I think the more i see of wackiness at the small stakes the more i just don't want to fold a lot of hands you know what i'm saying but I, I i think you can agree and the chatters can agree like if you guys agree with me well sure i'm sure we'll do this for a youtube video i would be what i would be more shocked by is if he was value betting something worse than jack jack that would be more shocking to me so if we take that part out then we really only have a hand that's a bluff catcher. And when you run this scenario with this configuration, I just don't know how often you're going to find bluffs here that much. So that's that's the whole point. Anyways, um, thanks for the call. I appreciate it.